Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my study. Uh, we're having a little look back to Psalm 90 that John was teaching at the weekend. And a little time to reflect on just a couple of verses that really stood out to me uh, over uh, the last uh, 48 hours or so. The place I want to start is in verse 10, if we can. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. What are the causes of uh, sorrow and trouble? Well, uh, I, I take it in, in the big scheme of things, it is that they pass quickly and we fly away. We, we, we die at the end. And that's always hovering on the edge of, of our consciousness, isn't it? And I guess the older we get, the more it sort of presents itself to our our vision of the future. More broadly, I think, uh, it's just a recognition that life is is very up and down, isn't it? That there, uh, for all the, the happy times and the joyful times, uh, every year brings with it troubles and sorrows. It struck me that uh, we are today living in a, a time where a greater proportion of the population than has ever been the case before are able to um, meet that sense of trouble and sorrow with solutions, medical interventions. Um, many of us have benefited from uh, medical solutions to problems that in, in just a couple of generations ago would have been uh, fatal or greatly incapacitating we can take medications we can uh, we, we, we can manage our health we, we, we have enough food we uh, we have somewhere to live lots of the things that caused daily trauma to previous generations are no longer a problem for us or at least for the for the majority of people in the world and, and a greater proportion as, as every year passes which are things to be to celebrate aren't they um, and yet there's plenty of evidence, I think, that that hasn't dealt with the sense of trouble and sorrow. It certainly hasn't dealt with the problem of death. I know our life expectancy now is into the 80s, so a bit bit longer than uh, the psalmist could uh, sort of regularly envisage, but not that much more. Uh, one of the leading causes of um, of premature death in America in the last few years has been uh, opiates. Uh, drugs that numb the pain, uh, which suggests, first of all, that trouble and sorrow really do stick around with us, and that uh, we find it intolerable, and, and we'd, we'd rather take drugs that are highly addictive and ultimately pretty deadly than endure the pain. So what was true when the psalmist wrote this, when Moses wrote this 4,000 4, years ago, near enough, remains the case, albeit perhaps the traumas and trials have changed a bit. It is a description of uh, the world as it always has been and always will be, because, verse 9, uh, we're under the wrath of God. From Genesis 3 onwards, death and all of the things that go with death, that sense of decay of ourselves and the world, have been a deliberate part of God's curse to stop us from feeling immortal and indestructible in this world. And that sense of uh, eternity in the heart that longs for that immortality and indestructibility is the thing that causes so much uh, anguish and, and trauma. That'll be true for all of us. It's true for the Christian, we live in that world, and it's true for the non-Christian, who very much lives in that world, and often without any hope. How do we meet this world, this this trouble and this strife? Well, I take it verse 15 is very much in the same territory. For as many years as we have seen trouble, is, is the same language, isn't it, as the trouble in verse 10. But the psalmist here, Moses, thinks that we can be glad through all of the days of trouble until we fly away. Not... Uh, walking around with a, a glib, foolish grin on our faces in the face of trauma, but to have a different perspective. Uh, what gives us joy and gladness, verse 14, is, is remembering and dwelling on and being satisfied by 
the unfailing love and mercy of God. And what gives us that ability, that that um, that anchor to hold us fast when everything around us is is a, a maelstrom of, of of traumatic things, is that remembering that God is good, that He actually has all of those traumatic things in His hand. That, that he's already set before us an eternity where all of these things will be taken away and that he is with us in his love, refining us, shaping us, uh, leading us forward uh, and protecting us until the day when we come home. That's been my reflection. So I wonder, as, as I come to an end and, and, and set you off uh, thinking together, I wonder, can you can you think of times when... Uh, when the trouble and strife of this world, when the sorrows and troubles have overwhelmed you, and similarly times where you have been greatly helped by remembering God's love and compassion and kindness to you, where you've met the same sort of traumas with a very different perspective, when you've remembered to be satisfied in God's goodness. Perhaps you could share that with uh, those around you if if that's uh, appropriate. And remind yourself, let's stick with uh, the satisfying love of God through all our days of trouble and strife until we come home. Let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you that you are a God of love and a love that extends to all your people all of the time. Please satisfy us this morning with that knowledge that you are with us and for us and working in us and through us in the midst of Uh, those days of sorrow and trouble and that when we fly away it is not into nothingness but to your loving arms for jesus sake amen